So today we're going to be talking about the Tasty Keys Enjoy keyboard. Now I wasn't too sure what to think about this keyboard at first, I'll be honest, I wasn't too sure if this was going to sound good, feel good, I wasn't too sure about the price point, it's $600 in stock, but I was genuinely pretty impressed with this keyboard. And before we get too deep into the keyboard review itself, I did want to touch upon what I think about the keyboard community as a whole right now, especially designing keyboards. For the last little bit on my streams, I've been saying that I've been getting a little bored of the traditional keyboards, mounting styles, etc., and that I'm looking towards aesthetics and designs more so. But I do feel like a lot of enthusiasts are starting to feel this way as well. I'm looking personally towards more aesthetics. I know a lot of people are also looking towards more design changes within the keyboard itself, but I'd love to see some new implementation of mounting styles or just something new inside a keyboard. So I think the first person who kind of does that is going to hit a huge bell, and a lot of people are going to be excited for that. But in terms of reviewing keyboards, I still think it's been really, really fun. I know a lot of keyboards have been striking the same designs with that whole minimal approach to things and even having the same mounting styles, but it still is a lot of fun to review these products. And every now and then you get something that looks really good and even performs just as good too. And that's why I've personally been leaning towards the aesthetics of keyboards lately. If someone can make something that's very, very aesthetically pleasing, as well as sounds and feels just as good, count me in, I'm there. And to come full circle, that's what the Enjoy is to me. Not only does it sound really good, but it looks and feels just as good too. And I'm really excited by it. But let's get back into the review itself. Now this is the friends and family version, and this one here came in a blue gray or whatever color this is called, the gunmetal looks like more to me. But the actual in-stock unit will be an E-white, which I think looks really good too, mixed with that brass bottom. So to go over some specs about the Enjoy really quickly, it does have a pen groove or pen rail at the top. It is gasket mounted and has a big solid brass weight at the bottom. That's what makes this thing so heavy. In fact, it weighs 7.8 pounds unbuilt. Yo, this thing is heavy. Do you see my desk shake? That's right. You guys heard me. 7.8 pounds unbuilt. And I'm going to be honest. There was a few things about the Enjoy that I was a little bit worried about. First of all, I did think that not having a separate weight here at the bottom would actually make this sound a little bit more like a bell or have a little bit more resonance to it. I was very wrong about that. This big hunking piece of brass actually did really well at breaking up the sound evenly, so you didn't really hear any hollowness or any resonance of the case. And one thing I actually like about the keyboard too is it uses really nice feet opposed to those bubble feet that we've been seeing. I like feet like this, it looks nicer on the keyboard and feels more premium. Not to mention these bubble feet actually yellow in time, which when you're buying a premium product doesn't look all that great. And the keyboard itself does have a really beautiful side profile. It does feature a 5.5 degree typing angle and it makes for a really comfortable experience. But let's take a look at the internals, shall we? Now there were a few odd things about the internals of this keyboard and things that I personally would have changed. And one of the biggest changes that I would love to see in maybe a future rendition of this board is the way that the gaskets are mounted. Now I don't mind putting gaskets on the plate itself, but if you ever did want to swap out your plate or get something custom made, you're going to need new gaskets because you can't really transfer those gaskets onto a new plate right now. Next up we have the PCB and plate assembly, and this is a polycarbonate plate, but the website does offer a brass as well as a carbon fiber plate. Now I typically am not a fan of brass plates, but if you are looking for a brass plate and more stiff typing experience, I'd recommend going that route, but I do feel like the carbon fiber and polycarbonate are probably your best bets. And one of the nicest features about this board is it's hot swap. So I didn't have to solder anything and if you guys want to quickly change your switches out, you guys can without having to disassemble this thing. But one of the downsides of hot swap is it just you get a fixed layout, so if this layout is not your thing, then you probably won't love it. But one thing that I would love to see change in this board for future renditions is to have some sort of alignment guides on the bottom of the case as well. They are present on the top of the case and they are deeper here, but even something more shallow just to show where the actual PCB and plate assembly goes when you're actually clamping this all together, I think that would be extremely helpful to newer users. And you guys know I'm all about the building experience and I do think that would just add a level of simplicity to this keyboard. But here is a quick sound demo before I get into some closing thoughts, and the full sound demo will be at the end of the video. All in all though, I was really shocked by this keyboard. Again, I did not expect it to sound this way. I thought it would sound a little bit more hollow and resonant. I was completely wrong and shocked at the way this thing sounded. I really like it. I think it looks good, I think it feels good, and I think it sounds good. And if you're one of those people who associate weight with quality, this thing feels extremely premium. It is very heavy, and if you're not into heavy keyboards, I probably don't recommend it, but if you're in the market for something in stock and don't mind shelling out $600, and I think this is a great case for you. Plus, I own this really nice pen, and I've been wanting to pair it with a pen rail keyboard for so long, so this satisfies that need. So nice. 
But I know there's gonna be some people watching this video saying, Alex, I do not wanna spend $600 for an in-stock product. That's okay, you don't have to. I do think that there's some great alternatives, again, to this keyboard. Just like I said that the Bakaneko was a great alternative to the Moon Tower, I do think that if you're looking for something that's 60 to 65% range, the Bakaneko is probably gonna be your best bet to get something that sounds and feels like this. Now, mind you, the mounting styles are gonna be a little bit different. One's gonna be a gasket mount, the other one's an O-ring mount, but I do feel like the sound profile was close enough and the typing experience was also very close too. But yeah, that's really it, that's the video. Hopefully this was helpful to anyone who's looking into this keyboard or just wants to watch stuff about keyboards. If you guys like this type of content, please leave a like and comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.